Welcome back to The Morning Show here on Arise News. In Nigeria, managing waste disposal has become a major concern despite several attempts by successive governments and private organizations. A company ready to take on this challenge head-on is Visionscape Sanitation Solutions, a division within Visionscape Group. Joining us in the studio with over 25 years of experience in the global waste management industry is CEO of Visionscape, John Irvin. He's here to tell us more about their partnership with the Lagos State Government to deploy waste management. Welcome to the morning show, John. Welcome good morning, to the ladies. Morning. Thank yeah. you. Thanks it's great to have you, you here. You've been everywhere but here. Yeah. Yes. yes. <laughs> all over the state. It's like a oh, second holiday oh. home to now. Right? <laughs> now, you had the pl pleasure of actually getting on the boat with us this morning. Yes. That's how we actually get to the studio every morning. Now, there's a lot of waste disposal in the waters. Uh, is there any initiative that Visionscape has on at the moment? moment or planning on with water waste? Certainly. As part of our core business model, uh, we have uh, experts and, and management teams throughout the, the globe who are specifically involved and experienced in all types of, of plastics, waste, industrial waste. So we have a specific division that looks at plastics and we own companies elsewhere in the globe who actually recycle the, the plastics. Right. So it's part of the core business philosophy of Visionscape. And it's up to us, as part of our model also, is skill transferring. So to understand the expertise we have in-house is to transfer that knowledge and, and skill set to the local people who work for us, okay, exactly. for our employees that we've, we've enhanced here in Lagos. Right, so you're talking about employees now, but talking about the general culture of recycling in Nigeria, yes. it's yeah. almost non-existent. That culture is not, it's not something I was raised with. I wasn't told, oh, put plastic bottles here, mm. glass here, paper here. I wasn't taught that. So yeah. you need the help and the cooperation of the people yes, yes to, sure. to to carry out everything that you have to carry out how you how, how do you plan to go about educating everybody across Certainly. nigeria okay first of all there's a small misconception here there's a, an undercurrent of recycling being done believe it or not in nigeria not to the extent that it's visibly impactful mm. aesthetically immediately right. okay so it's part of the business and part of the project within the cli we've committed to an education program we have reached out with CSR and sustainability programs. I myself and the team have been to schools, we've been to universities, been to hospital, and throughout the project of the CLI, through the, the, the life term, we will be reaching into local um, LCDAs, into Lagosians, and hopefully we will establish recycling at source because this is the only way we can really, really tackle the issue, especially with the plastic recycling, right. is to take it out the mainstream before it disappears. So we have to ensure that we encapsulate it right. at generation. Right, right. So since your contract with Lagos State Government, how has uh, the programme gone so far, the Cleaner Lagos Initiative? Have you, seen, have you seen vast improvements? Well, first of all, I have to take my hat off to Lama. Okay? Yeah, Lama. Certainly. <laughs> For years, these guys have really had a tough time. And why have they had a tough time? Because like every market, whether it's an emerging market or an established market, a mature market, Waste infrastructure is always the last thing it's invested in. So it's, it's very tough for a government body to go to a government and ask for an increase in budget year on year, year on year. And as we all know, Lagos is a mega city. Yeah. It's a centre of excellence. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, And, you know, for the, the waste to, to, be, to be managed properly, you know, incomprehensible changes have to be made. Legislative, you know, um, awareness, and also the physical practice of delivering that waste. So it's been tough. To be very honest, it's been tough. But now we're starting to get there. People now realise who we are, what our mandate is within the largest CLI. And more importantly, people are approaching us now and asking us what they should be doing. When we go into the local government LCDAs, when we go to the markets, people are really interested and engaged in what we're doing. Right. But what, what's Visionscape's vision for Lagos? Well, primarily at the moment, we're, we're building what we call the infrastructure. And let me touch on that slightly. So if we just take, for instance, under a concession agreement, we've taken over some of the state's old waste management facilities, the TLSs, which is transfer loading stations, depots where the vehicles are maintained and upkept. But more importantly is the Eco Park at Epi. We've taken over the dump site at Epi, and we're building the first engineered landfill in West Africa. Oh. And we're turning that into an Eco Park. So what does an Eco Park mean? This eco park will encase the waste, so there's no leachate management and no leachate uh, 
the deterioration, there is no gas uh, escape. We encapsulate all that, but we take it a step further. We're building a multi-purpose recycling facility. We will recycle the products even before they get into the entrance of the, the landfill. We're building an anaerobic digestion plant. We can generate electricity from organic waste. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. We we're, need that. Yes, yeah. we're doing tyre <laughs> recycling. And to touch on the plastics, we're building a very, very high technical plastic washing facility. So the plastics come in, they get recycled, we wash and flake them, we turn them into a product there in the eco park, and then we send them to the sister companies who then re engineer that plastic back to a material we need here. So, for instance, the plastic bottles you talked about earlier, yeah. we would wash and flake these bottles, we then send them to our sister company. Our sister company then brings these products back as black biodegradable bags. I need 15 million black bags a year for the contract here. Oh, wow. So, the story is today's waste carries tomorrow's waste. Right. So yeah. that's the, that's the purpose. Of, that's what we're bringing to the forefront of of the state. Nice, okay. nice. That, that sounds great, and especially with the advancements of yes. the digital age. Yeah. Yes. But can you tell us more about the remote areas yes. in Lagos? Well, what we do? There's, there's two types of waste collection. You have your uh, traditional, as you see, what the, the the garbage truck lifting the bin in the back and being emptied, mm. and then we have what we call um, containerisation. So containerization for remote and outlying areas are these huge, huge, great big containers, 20, 30 CBM containers that can be lifted maybe once, twice a week, depending on the volume of waste. So that's the outreach to the outlying areas and the remote areas. So these, les uh, these residents and Lagosians are not being forgotten about. They are encapsulated and looked after in the process as well. It's just a different type of methodology. Right. That suits them. Yeah, yeah. Because, because of the volume of waste as well. As you can understand, we can't send a truck, you know, 350 kilometres round trip every day. Yeah. Because the waste being generated is a lot less than what's in, if we say, on the islands, you know, on, on the mainland, the Keja, Apapa, Oshode. So we have to put a containerisation policy in place where we go and collect that uh, container on a frequent basis, but ensuring that the residents are still serviced to a minimum. Right. Okay. And are there hopes to expand outside Lagos? Because right now you are focused on Lagos. Yes. As we say, we're a global company. We took the decision three years ago to put our footprint into the, the emerging markets. Um, and we started off, as, we, as you rightly said, in Lagos, where we applied for an international tender. We were successful. We we're talking to other states. Um, I was recently in, in the federal city, Abuja. Okay. Um, yes, last week I came back from Ghana. Okay. Next week I'm going to Nairobi. <laughs> so, um, yes, so we, we have a, a portfolio that's, that's growing extensively. Uh, and it's very interesting the people who are outreaching to us and asking us to come rather yeah. than the traditional mature markets where you have to apply and, and you're, you're bidding feverishly for business. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. okay, well, that's great, that's great. You know, so I really want to actually touch on the digital age. Now, yes. Lagos is moving, uh, we're advancing, even okay. if it's slower than the rest of the world, we're using more technology. So how can you implement or how are you implementing the use of technology in waste management? Certainly. Um, I can give you a brief example. So the, the green trucks you see, the vision scape trucks were everywhere <laughs> in the street. Okay, and there's more coming as, we, oh, as wow. we speak. Yeah, yeah. Eventually there'll be three, four hundred trucks here. Okay, that, that's a progress. In Lagos alone. In Lagos alone. Amazing. So the, the technology within these trucks and the software you, are just amazing. So today I can go to my phone, my tablet, my PC. I can log in. I can tell you if a driver doesn't have his seatbelt on. I can tell you when the driver opens the door. I can tell the fuel consumption. Uh, and the second stage of the technology is when the residential bins are chipped with an RFID tag, when the bin goes to the vehicle to be emptied, the vehicle reads the weight of the bin, and we know because of the bin location, we know the type of waste that's in it, and we can predict the recycling rates and diversification rates away from landfill. Oh, so wow. that's how we're using technology on the vehicles. And then, of course, in the eco park and the transfer loading stations, there's other types of technology, you know, that anaerobic digestion, turning food waste and vegetation waste to, to electricity. Obviously, yeah. the gas capture technology, we can extract the methane gas. We have a decision to make. Do we make more power with that or do we turn it into a fuel and we run our support vehicles on the methane gas generated landfill? Then we have the byproduct of leachate, which is, you know, the contaminated water. We can clean that, we can use it for irrigation, or we can give it back to farmers 
for irrigation. So there's, there's always developing plans with the technology on how we're going to deliver. Right, okay, so I, I feel like what you're doing is so advanced that mm. a lot of people in Lagos need to catch up. You've had some bad press as Visionscape, and it's yeah. almost because people don't really understand what you're doing. Yes. So how can Lagosians get on board, you know, become partners? That way they see what you're doing, they see how they can support, they feel like a part of the change coming to Lagos yeah. State. My famous phrase to the press and to fellow presenters to yourself is, with resistance, with change or comes resistance. Um. Okay, with reform comes resistance, I should say, my apologies. And if I just give you two examples of that. If we go back to the late 70s in New York, when New York City was nearly, it was nearly bankrupt, the first cut the city made, they paid off tens of thousands of sanitation workers. Oh, wow. Waste was piled in the street. I'm talking 10, 15 feet, and people can check that on the internet. Then in the 80s, back in the UK, when privatisation came out, when uh, contracted private companies took over government uh, waste collection, same happened again. Wow. So I think the lesson to be learned here, you know, and my very good friend, Dr. Phillips, who's the director of the, the MOE, uh, her and I done a, a synopsis in Lagos State University. The lesson we've learned here is, is more about the communication on the lead up to the transition of the project of the CLI. Mm -hmm. There was no overlap between the existing government services and the privatisation of the services. Right. So, so it's all about communication. And, and now I think with the CLI, there's a more clearer message going out to yeah. negotiations. Amazing. OK, well, um, we were reading earlier, and this happened like over a year, or about eight months ago, the Kenyan government banned or put a ban on single-use plastic bags. So the ban was introduced August 2017, as one politician called the waste a national disaster. So citizens surprised as the severity of the infraction are being jailed, and police are heavily enforcing the law. The penalty can bring a maximum of two to four years jail time and a fine of up to $49,000. The ban has affected those in the packaging sector, with companies such as Packaging Industries Limited Limited, laying off hundreds of employees in Nairobi. The Kenyan Association of Manufacturers claim that as many as 100,000 jobs have been lost. Yes, so we want to talk about this ban or this kind of ban. Mm -hmm. Does it help economies or does it hurt economies? Different markets have different requirements. Some may think it's extreme, some may not think it's enough. Legislation has to change, and we were very fortunate that the Commonwealth uh, uh, heads of state met uh, in London recently and supported the, the change policy within the uh, Commonwealth countries for the plastics. I do, on a personal belief, because I come from an uh, established market in Europe, there's processes and ways to manage it. Taxation uh, at point of purchase, so if I go and buy my groceries in the supermarket, I pay a fee for the for bag the plastic, for yeah. the plastic, and that helps maintain. But that's not strong enough. That still had to be taken further. Yeah. And I think that heavy legislation plastics globally will eventually come to the forefront. Now, it may not be in my time sitting as a, <laughs> as a garbologist, as they call me, a waste professional, <laughs> but I think legislation will change, not only in emerging markets, but in mature markets. But with legislation, it has to come in processes. You can't just overnight draw a line, because people have to get you, as you highly, highlighted there, People have lost their jobs, maybe because the implications weren't thought through properly. Right. It's about control, deliverance, then legislation, and right. education and communication come on the back of that. Right. So is this something we support or no? 100%. Really? 100%. Amazing. Yes. If you have a look, 70% of the waste in the oceans is plastic. It has to stop somewhere. Mm. It has to stop. Well, as a quick, a quick one, as citizens and um, law-abiding citizens, what can we do to make Lagos clean? Well, obviously, Lagos has the, the sanitation corps, which is like the waste police, we call them. Um, the biggest problem we have under the CLI is the fly tipping. Mm -hmm. And it's only a small, small percentage of Lagosians. And the majority of Lagosians are, are law-abiding. If there's something we could do immediately, mm -hmm. is to bag the waste. You know, don't bag leave it on the street. Mm -hmm. Bag the waste. And if you see fly tipping, report it. Right. Okay. Because it spoils your street and my street. Yeah. And please let the viewers understand I'm not just here today and away back to Scotland or the UK or Europe tomorrow. 
I'm a Lagosian tempera lady hey, as well, right? Okay. So, and I'm enjoying myself very well. Okay. Uh, yeah, Thank we have so to get much. you a key to the city this then. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Thank, yeah. Thank, you so Thank you so much. Thank you so much, John. It's, it's been amazing pleasure. talking to you. Thank you very much, and please. that brings us to the end of the morning show today. Thank you at home for watching from the entire morning show team here in Lagos. All that's left to say is enjoy the rest of your morning and, of course, the rest of your day. Goodbye. Goodbye.